Hello and welcome back to Having Fun Repairs. Uh, my wife found, uh, oh, thank you, my kids are helping me out today, uh, found, got from somebody for free a uh, four moms uh, rocker room. I uh, looked it up online, you can typically find these around, at least on Amazon, for around $160. But uh, apparently this thing doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to plug it in. If I can figure out where to plug in, is that? Alright, got it plugged in. I'm going to turn it on and just see what happens. Yeah. Alright. I don't know if anything supposed to illuminate or light up oh, the blue. but uh, it is not turning it on at all so you need to figure out if it's a oh, oh there goes a light briefly it just goes off daddy yeah it does uh -oh. it just goes back on and off on and off i don't know why it's doing that so nothing's happening with it plugged in. Looks like we might have an electrical issue. Hopefully no mechanical issues because those are typically harder to repair. But uh, we'll disassemble this and see what we can figure out. First start by taking this basin off the basket area, whatever you want to call it. You have a tab back here and then two release buttons on the side that have to be depressed and then this pulls up hey Ian do you want to help me you will press that button over on this side that this button over here can you hold that in for me you pressing that in all right hold it in there we go thank you Yeah, it doesn't turn on at all, does it? Nope, doesn't. Okay. I don't see a light coming here. There's buttons too. Yeah. There's no buttons in here. Let's see if anything changes with the basket out. Lights on for a second. And that's about it. Okay, we'll keep on. Okay, so one of the first things we can check is just the uh, output power from the uh, the power adapter. Uh, looks like this thing converts uh, anywhere between, what does it say, 100 to 240 volts AC, 50 60 hertz, half an amp, outputs 12 volts at 1 amp. Uh, you can also read that back here, 12 volts 1000 milliamps or 12 volts 1 amp. So the outside of the plug will be the negative and the center is your positive. So that's what we'll do is we'll check the voltage on the plug itself. Okay. So checking the plug, we have uh, 12 volts, but it's moving around quite a bit. You see that jumping around. Makes me wonder if there's a rectification issue in the power supply itself. Because I'm not getting a constant 12 volts out. It's like it's jumping around between 11.3 and Twelve point three volts DC. Pretty interesting. See, there's a way that we can test that just to make sure that it's not the plug. There is a way that we can do that. So I wanted to eliminate the drop cord I was using uh, as a source of issue for the power adapter. I've got plugged right into my wall now. Uh, it looks like I still have a. Quite a big 
a big amount of fluctuation in the out output DC voltage. Although it's not dipping below 11, below 12 volts as much. I still think there's an issue with the rectification on that power supply. I'm going to plug it into the machine and see if it makes any difference. And it's still the same thing. You get brief light, but nothing's happening. I wonder if I need to have that basket in order for it to stay on. I'm going to put the basket back in. Alright, got the basket back in. And it's still the same conditions. So the next thing I'll do is try hooking a power supply, my own uh, DC power supply, up to this to see if I can't insert 12 volts to see if this will turn on and stay on. I at least want to rule out everything before I start anything prior to the machine itself for I start tearing it apart. Okay, so I finally got the cover off. Uh, many hours later, I had to work on dinner and getting the kids ready for bath and bed, etc. Got the cover off. Uh, I'm going to apply power uh, 12 volts DC from my uh, bench top power supply into here. But when I took it off, I noticed a couple things, so I think I know where I'm going to end up concentrating my efforts. First off, uh, let's see if it's better without the light on. Maybe not. No, I... If you notice, there's a lot of wear on the plastics. Pretty excessive. I don't see how this band would be tearing this up as much as it is. Uh, I'm going to clean that up. We could have an issue with the motor here, but I also notice up underneath the board, you see that white spot? If I look further down, something looks like it might be a black. You know, this could be flux residue, maybe some water damage, or getting rid of their capacitors on the other side. Maybe this cap gave up the ghost and burned up the circuit board. Not too sure yet. So, let me set my uh, one amp. This is what I know should be drawing. Let me just turn up the amp. It's only going to draw as much amps as I need. But this will give us a constant 12 volts in versus that DC power supply. I'm making a big presumption and maybe it's only using a halfway bridge rectifier or something but either way that voltage should vary in my opinion as much as it was let's uh, take a look at this light though hey it is on continuously so Looks like the issue is on the power supply end. And how much? So we're averaging about, uh, what would you call that? 160, 170 milliamps. If I was to take, or yeah, 100, 150, 160 milliamps. And if I was to take an average on there. Oh, seems like the power supply is uh, not working. I wonder what these settings do. Oh. 
Regardless, I'm going to clean all this up. Take a look at the components on that board just to make sure they are okay. And then we'll tear apart the power supply to see, uh, see what's going on inside of it. So, if you're curious and uh, want to see, I took out the two top screws up here just so I can lift it up. Uh, everything is using a... Everything is connectorized, these. So it should be pretty easy to unhook. Put everything back in, minus this uh, piers that my DC power goes into the board, and that's the only soldered item. But the rest can come out, and I should be able to have some leeway to start looking more at this board and getting everything over here cleaned up. Alright, so there goes the board. As you can see, you definitely see some type of residue here. But I did notice you got many, many test points. I'll probably uh, go online and See if there's a schematic for this. I'm, I highly doubt there is. You got your ground at test point 20. Test point one is going to be the 12 volts coming in. Uh, I'm just going to go around and take all the measurements and record it. Get my power back in here. 12 volts. And we'll see what. Get of all this. See brown, test point 20, test point 1. I have my multimeter set up correctly. Bolts. And start poking around a little bit more. Ground, that was test point one. Test point 27, 12. Test point 28, 12. Test point 19, uh, 4.9, call that 5 volts. Test point 18. Volts. Test point three says five volts. Is that five volts? It sure is. Test point twenty-six. Zero to nine. Nine more volts. Test point twenty-three. Two point four volts. Test point twenty-four. Two point four volts. Test point twenty-two. Between two appears to be a ground. This point one. Oh, I know what that is. That's the audio jack coming in. Okay, that's why I wouldn't get anything there. Let's go to test point fifteen. Five volts. Not sure if I did twenty nine, but we'll check again. Yeah, four point six. Seventeen five. See, this is a ground right here at test point five, so I shouldn't see anything. And then we got test point six right there, 2.4, test point seven, point zero six four, test point nine, five volts, and test point five or three or something, five volts. It was a little bit harder to read. Anyway, well, I'm going to guess that the motor power comes from here. Which 
12 volts to the motor. And something in here. Uh, some type of flip flop. Even though that voltage is applied, which that'd be. I presume it's going to be a flip flop circuitry, is what's comprising this, it's causing that polarity of the voltage to go back and forth from positive to negative. So the motor will spin in two directions. Of course, pulls the strings and makes this nice rocking voltage. Alright, so I've recorded all the test points and I'll look those up later. If I look them up at all, it'll just be handy to reference back to it. Maybe it'll be good for somebody else watching this video since we know that mine was working and we know that the problem is with the power supply. If you think it's the board, at least now you have the voltages as recorded off of this test right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is take out these four screws. I'm going to poke around the board and get all this uh, cleaned up. Uh, I'm believing that this is more than likely flux residue based off of how shiny it is around these soldering joints. And maybe that's what I'm seeing on the other side as well. So I cleaned up the board a bit. And uh, that residue I saw, even on this side, was only where these capacitors were soldered in. So I do believe it was flux residue. And the staining on my uh, Q-tip, although it's hard to see underneath the light from my cell phone, is yellow. So again, I don't think any components failed on here, but I would like to go over a few things. So, <clears throat> uh, you heard me mention we got capacitors, and then I, you know, uh, I mentioned seeing the the goop solder residue here. Um, I want to go over a couple of components, components just to tell you what's what I believe is going on with this board. You have your PTC, this is your uh, thermistor. It's a simple protection for this circuit. Uh, what the thermistor does is, let's say that um, something was to overheat internally, uh, the thermistor will, uh, it is basically a resistor that changes its value based upon the ambient temperature. So if the temperature got too hot, that thermistor would cease to conduct or and essentially turn off cut out the voltage driving the motor etc uh, or in some instances I believe that my also short but I don't think that's the safest route to go I think this would go to an open uh, max resistance cut out power all right, so what do we got on the other side? Well, you have your potentiometer or variable resistor VR, and that's what slides into the button on the other side. Uh, up here, it is uh, it's hard to read, but 7805GA. This would be your voltage regulator. So even though we know we have 12 volts coming in, the, uh, the 5 volts, the 2.5 volts, uh, the other voltages we would have seen, uh, at least one of them, probably the 5 volts and it's cut down to a smaller voltage er elsewhere, is being produced by this voltage regulator. Uh, over here, we have a small IC uh, 10369 alpha, and I think that back half is... Uh, D5BOA and kind of hard to read. I'm not sure I can get my phone to focus. Let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe that would be easier. There we go. 10369A D5B0A. I believe. This is some type of uh, integrated audio amplifier, uh, possibly to drive these speakers. 
uh, some type of generic amplifier uh, because you do have an audio jack on the top of this uh, it's over on the other side over here so it'd be a low level audio coming out of your phone good for uh, you know a headset but uh, that's probably providing a little bit of amplification driving those bigger speakers on the front uh, you have some type of you know, comparator circuitry uh, microcontroller whatever you want to call it underneath this blob more than likely the brain box for this entire thing and then these three guys I believe uh, what are they C C 3035 LD so these are um, 8 pin SOPs or SOP 8 is kind of how you search them up online an SOP is a small outline package or small outline integrated circuit SOIC I believe these are being used for your uh, for like single channel uh, motor uh, basically your single channel motor driver ICs so again this is just me taking a big assumption based off of what I'm seeing with these capacitors and these ICs I believe what you have here uh, what you've essentially developed is an a stable uh, multi vibrator or flip-flop uh, some might call them uh, a, a type of oscillator as well now spare you the boring details of what an a stable is but it's a simple circuitry that allows you to have a, a uh, one voltage input we know we're getting 12 volts into here constantly and then these small ICs you have here these uh, 8 pin SOPs are what's going to drive the motor over here although we know this rocks back and forth so that means that only one is driving a mo the motor, or they both are, but not at the same time. Uh, with an A stable, what you have is uh, basically you're probably developing a square wave uh, signal out of both sides of this. Uh, so essentially, that's like uh, if you see a sine wave, you know it goes up and down. Square wave is flat square top back down and we call those highs and lows and so when the output of one is going to be high the output of the other is going to be low and they will remain that way uh, for a specific time that time is based off of the capacitance your capacitor sets the amount of time that one is going to be high and one's going to be low and then it's going to flop or switch or os os oscillate and then the other one's going to output a high and the other one will go low and I would presume that one is going to be a positive DC and the other one will be a negative DC for this brushless DC motor to essentially drive it one direction for a preset amount of time and then stops and goes the other direction for a preset amount of time based upon your circuit card here and the everything I previously mentioned you know, there are, again I'm not an engineer I'm an electronics technician I'm working on things uh, similar to this not necessarily this right here this is the first infant swing ever torn apart but um, I believe that's what's going on here I'll let uh, somebody in the uh, old comment section down below tell me if I'm mistaken correct me and by all means do so okay so I've cleaned up that board what I'm going to do next is clean up the motor the plastics on these gears this band I'm not going to clean these up with alcohol because alcohol will dry up this rubber and it will deteriorate quicker so I'm going to use 
a little bit of, uh, I don't know if Windex would be better, probably just soap and water. Now I'm going to apply some grease to uh, this guy to help try to reduce some, some of the wear that I'm seeing on this. So hold on a second, I'm going to get it cleaned up, apply some grease, and then we'll retest it out. All right. So I got that all cleaned up, and I put a bit of uh, silicone grease down in there. Uh, same type I use on some outdoor equipment, uh, an edger and a weed whacker. So that's why it's green looking. Uh, wiped away some of the excess. Now, I'm going to speak, g give you my honest opinion about this uh, product. We showed you online about $150, right? I can tell you component wise, integrated circuits, I, I don't see the cost there. Uh, the motor looks to be pretty robust brushless uh, DC motor. Uh, again, uh, it's still not adding up to me yet. Now I know a lot of R&D has to go into, you know, modeling, safety, ensuring that, uh, especially when it comes to infant stuff, you don't put anything with the intention of it breaking and uh, your child getting injured or worse. But I think sometimes things are priced to a degree to give the customer uh, the feeling of assurance that they're buying a very high quality product. Uh, so I don't mean to upset any of the four moms fans or anybody who buys this. You know, I've not even looked into this is Rockaroo. I haven't looked into the the Mamaroo. It actually rocks back and forth and up and down as well. But I'm just not quite seeing a hundred and fifty dollar price tag. Um, there are probably people who disagree, and by all means, could, I invite you into the comments. Uh, explain to me where you think the price is coming from and um, you know you correct me but for what I see here just internal wise um, before we even get into tearing apart the power supply see if we can even fix that uh, I'm just not seeing a hundred and fifty dollar price tag with this product you know Maybe if you had some better speakers, maybe if the the audio amplifier was actually Bluetooth instead of, you know, a phono plug from your cell phone. I'm sure, quite possibly. But with this product, I'm I gotta be honest, I'm just not seeing that price tag. Speed control works just fine. So, I suppose the next thing I'll do is uh, put this all back together and tear apart the uh, power supply, test it out with the power supply once more, and then uh, see if we can't repair that. Anyways, I uh, finally got the power supply apart. I pretty much had to ham fist break everything, tear my own fingers up, poke myself to death with a screwdriver. Finally got it apart. Um, I did a little bit of damage while doing so. The uh, common lead for my mains coming in broke off. I soldered it back on. And because of how aggressive I was, the uh, lead off of this coil here, let me see if I can get this focus it. Yeah. The bomb lead off of this coil here uh, broke. I had to solder it back in. It goes through hole to the output of this, the hot, where we should see 12 volts. And then on the back side of the board, um, there's a trace that runs from uh, here. Should come around 
and hit this trace here going to this uh, resistor I broke that trace so I put a little bodge wire in here just to wire everything up now I'm going to ahead and say uh, this thing isn't built in a way for you to say for you to repair it's not meant to be repaired so I am actually not even if I more than like even if I can repair it I am not going to because uh, regarding power supply issues consumer electronics whatever it's just it's not worth the risk of something that if you're a bit a, a bit rough with things like I am uh, going back in bodge wires repairs is, is too much of a risk that being said uh, to use again once repaired so these things are easily replaceable I think on uh, mom for you uh, mom for mom's website you can get a replacement power adapter for uh, fifteen dollars but really you can get them cheaper off of Amazon really all you would need to do is find a 12 volt 1 amp uh, power adapter with a plug that's uh, let's see five millimeter five millimeter jack what's the internal diameter five and, and two internal two millimeters internal yeah we'll look that up here in a second to see what they have on Amazon anyways I've done those small repairs for me breaking this tearing it open uh, I'm gonna plug it in a, in a second hopefully it doesn't let go of the ghost on us and we I've run into uh, even more issues like catching fire or something but just looking over this uh, I'm not seeing too much wrong outside of the stuff that I broke with it uh, you do have a bulging cap here I could replace that I don't suspect there's an issue with the transformer or the other caps uh, I don't suspect because we have an out had an output there's an issue with this uh, it's a resistor but it's actually a uh, uh, used as a fuse of sorts resistive fuse I don't suspect there's any issues with these diodes because that's where we're getting our rectification essentially changing AC to DC uh, an unregulated DC voltage uh, I don't think there's gonna be any issues with this optocoupler here or transistors because again we have an output if they were to break we more than likely would not have an output whatsoever in my opinion, I think the issue is going to come with this MOSFET right here. This MOSFET is a SD6834. Uh, we'll look it up here in a second. So what I am going to do internally, get my multimeter here. And I'm going to step away a little bit and I don't have this plugged in on the other side just yet but I am going to go ahead and plug this in And plug the other end into an outlet right by my feet and hopefully not let out the magic smoke. Okay, so far things are good. I was really expecting something to spark with my terrible, terrible repairs from tearing that thing apart. Let's see if we still have a uh, output DC. Hopefully, I didn't do more damage than I should have. And we do. We have that 12 volts. But as you can see, same issue that we were seeing earlier. You see it jumping around. 
So that is a problem. And that's the reason why we weren't able to power on the device. We're not getting a steady 12 volts DC. So, let me pull up the data sheet. SD6834 data sheet. Alright, so I got the data sheet up on my mobile phone here. Um, bunch of technical features. Looks like it's Energy Star 2.0 standard. Blah, 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 blah. Stuff I don't really care about. Yeah, it just tells me that it is dual voltage. You can plug it into, uh, well, probably depending on the actual shred out part. Uh, 85 to 265 volts to get your 12 volts out. What I really care about now, this is the bot diagram for the uh, MOSFET itself. These are all the internal devices you have. You have your ground, uh, see your voltage reference, your oscillator, uh, VCC is there on pin two or three maybe comparative circuitry well, three might be your ground we'll, we'll look down at the bottom this is just a basic block diagram we should have the actual pin out down at the bottom I would assume there we go all right so here's our pin out configuration pin one is ground pin two is your peak current sense pin uh, typically you'd have a resistor tied to pin two to set what your pink peak current was is going to be so you shouldn't if there was an over current condition the output should shut off the drain would come from your input mains uh, whatever it's rectified to and you should see 12 volts out on the VCC line pin 3 let me just make sure is it 12 volts out yep Unless otherwise specified, 12 volts at your VCC. Okay. Uh, five is normally not connected in C, or I, I sometimes I just refer to it as normally closed. NC here would be not connected. Uh, pin four is your feedback circuit. So this should self-regulate. So more than likely, if there is a instantaneous spike in current it can control the output voltage as long as it's not sustained over current I'm making big assumptions on this um, say you had uh, the voltage your VCC voltage uh, drop down a little bit it, the feedback circuit and the comparators in here would increase gain to get you back out to 12 volts say if it went slightly over voltage uh, the feedback circuit will detect that it, supply it to a reference voltage comparative circuitry to reduce gain to get you back down to 12 volts but those things would happen so quickly it's not like and, and unless you're looking at it on an O scope or a multimeter that can gate fast enough you're probably not going to see those things occur so what I want to do is I want to test between ground pin 1 and our VCC on pin 3 and if I see it wavering there, either more than likely my MOSFET is going to be an issue. Now it could be the feedback circuitry for the MOSFET. Let's see if there's any other diagrams in here. Yeah, so this this is a typical application might not be what we have specifically on this board I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb here and say it's not uh, you input high voltage uh, you know it's going to be rectified I imagine we're going to see 65 volts DC out the other side of the, di uh, the uh, diodes um, it's going to hit transformer feed into pins 8 7 and 6 
you should output 12 volts on pin 3. Pin 1 is going to be tied to a ground, but that ground is at a transistor. Okay, so that's always going to be a ground. You should be getting feedback from where volt out. So there's something that's going to compare the voltage uh, feedback IFB feedback voltage is I'm not seeing what I thought I was going to see on this diagram but anyways is there there's going to be a sample of that voltage going back in to keep it constant heading out uh, cool let me grab my multimeter And we are going to go to, there goes the notch, so that means that this was my pin one right here. That's going to be my ground. And then pin three, and what do we have? We're a little high here, but it's still fluctuating. That is more steady. So, hmm. that's high as well. It should be close to 12 volts, at least according to that diagram. Uh, okay. Is in the background being a little loud. I just want to check what we got coming from. Dios, yeah, like I said, you know, 60, I want to say 60, 65, rectification is occurring. No point in checking the remaining, but I'll just go ahead and do that anyways. Still there. Alright. So if I just go from an external ground to here, and it's probably the difference of these two would be where I should be getting 12 volts negative 65 negative 52 kinda iffy on that at least with the diagram for the of the um, circuit that was provided I would presume that is should be going to ground um, maybe there's not isolation or something. I don't know. If you're an engineer, you tell me what it is I'm thinking incorrectly about. Help me out here a little bit. Let me get 16 volts out. Am I showing 16 volts on my plug though? I'm showing 12 volts here. So maybe. Maybe it's a cap that's bad. Check something. I mean, it is slightly bulging. And flux are waiting there. So let's see. way for me to do this safely without shorting something out. Okay, so the cap. C10. Hmm. 
wonder if that cap is just bad. I'm going to pull it off and test it. See what we get. So bear with me for a second. So I got the cap out. It is a 1000 microfarad 6 rated 6 volts capacitor. Uh, let's see. Can we zoom in on it? Focus. There we go. Made by KCS. Uh, memory servers, I've never heard really good things about these type of capacitors. I'm fairly positive I've always heard to chunk them. But anyways, <clears throat> I said it's bulging. It's a thousand microfarad capacitor. We're going to test it real quick to see if it at least providing a decent capacitance rating measurement and we are getting still slowly rising oh. try to get my fingers off the leads I don't want to touch the met metal tips on these leads while I'm going Passive measurement because it can skew the reading. Come on. It's like I got old these like chopsticks or something. Let's try that. Alright. There we go. And there we go. 968 microfarads. That's pretty close to a thousand microfarads. I don't know what the tolerance is on this thing. Um, but even if it is a still providing the correct capacitance, again, I'm highly suspect. Uh, it could still be a bad capacitor because there could potentially be a short somewhere in the capacitor where possibly it's acting more like a resistor in circuit than it is a capacitor. I mean, I pulled it out of the regulated side, these two pins, this one here and that one there. So we're looking at our positive rail and our negative rail. I presume it's to keep some stability, although I don't outright know, for our 12 volts coming out. We got that 16 coming from the MOSFET, so maybe the MOSFET was good. I don't recall the jump around. I'll probably check that again in a minute. But I am going to plug this back in and just see if there was any difference on that 12 volts coming out now. Definitely not jumping around as much, but around about 12 volts, just shy. So I am going to say that more than likely that is the bad part on there. Let me go back to this MOSFET again. I want to measure between pins one and pin three. Our ground and pin three.
Yeah. Light went out on my cell phone because my battery is dying. Hopefully y'all can still see what I'm doing. I already mentioned what I'm trying to do. So, I mean, it's moving around a little bit, but it is fairly stable. I'm not getting a whole lot of movement out of there. And that's only varying at the rate of the same rate of what's coming out of the MOSFET anyways, from all appearances. But with that cap in, we were bouncing between 11 and a half to 12 volts. So, I think we have proved the fault on this one. If I was to repair this, just because I'm not too positive or keen on the MOSFET, I would be replacing the MOSFET and replacing this capacitor. Unfortunately, I don't have a MOSFET on hand, and I don't have a stockpile of capacitors, which is something I need to remedy long term. But that being said, um, I mentioned this before, it's not like I would repair this. I think there's too much. I could repair it, but it's not like I would continue to use this in the household. Uh, I think there's too much risk involved with a product of this nature that's going to have use family um, like I said I think you could find relatively cheap replacements let's see five was it five millimeters was a diameter on the outside and two millimeters on the inside where about not an exact measurement. Let's uh, pull up how much one of these costs online. For mom's Rockaroo power supply. All right. So here goes a replacement item from For Mom's website. Fifteen dollars. For cheap, guarantee you we can find something comparable that is. A lot cheaper. So, I'm just going to go to Amazon real quick. And I am going to do a search for a 12 volt, 1 amp power supply. Which I believe you'd find some pretty common ones for powering uh, LED lights. And you do. Amazon Prime Choice. Uh, Alita DC 12 volt 1 amp power supply 12 watts AC DC adapter and this is pretty close to the size adapter we need 5.5 and 2.5 millimeter 2.1 millimeter plug so I think that's going to be the right one I mean my caliper might not give, be giving me the exact measurements I'm willing to bet they've got a version that has different adapters on. Here goes a variable one for $12.90. Do 3 volts, 4.5, 5 volts, 6 volts, 7.5, 9, 12. 12 watts, 1000 milliamps or an amp. Used for CCTV. What's the plug size we have on this? 5.5 and 2.5. And then a 5 and 2.1. So they do make 5 and they do make 2.1. So that more than likely that is the adapter we need. Rather get a universal one with different plugs. And put all my eggs in one basket and it not be the right thing. But again, like I said, I mean, you could go on Amazon and definitely find something that's comparable. And a lot cheaper. And it'll still work. Dual voltage input. 110 to 240 volts AC. 50 to 60 hertz. And still output 12 volts at 1 amp. 
measures just one more time. Let me zero this out. All right, so I got 5 5.2, 5.3, 5.2, 5.3. Then internal. Might have gone too wide on that. Internal is 2.0, so I think we're looking at a 5 and 2. Um, so, so I actually have a spare 12-volt uh, uh, power supply. This one is actually rated up to 2 amps versus 1 amps. Uh, I still ordered the 12-volt 1-amp one with the 5.5 millimeter uh, DC jack on the other side. Uh, 2.1, I believe, is the internal diameter. Uh, I measured this one, it was the same diameter. And uh, to make y'all happy, if you are watching this video, here you go. 100% was the power supply. Like I said, uh, I wouldn't trust repairing the power supply myself uh, and, re and reusing it in the house means just too much of a safety risk. Um, but hopefully you found this video interesting. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe, share. Uh, regardless, have a good one. Bye.